Good morning. We'll go ahead and call the, uh, call the meeting of the Community Redevelopment Agency to order uh, August 4, 9.02 a.m. Please turn your cell phone to the vibrate, silence, or offsetting. Board of County Commissioners allows any person to speak regarding an item on the agenda. Speakers limited to two minutes unless otherwise determined by the chairperson to allow sufficient time for all speakers. Speakers, please refrain from abusive or profane remarks, disruptive outbursts, protests, or any other conduct which interferes with the orderly conduct of the meeting upon completion of the public comment period. Discussion will be limited to board members and questions rated by the board. Was this meeting properly advertised? Yes, this meeting was properly advertised through the Scambia Sun Press okay. on July 28, 2022. All right, do we have any speakers for public forum? No, sir. Thank you. All right, technical public service consent agenda. Claire. Thank you. Good morning. Um, our first agenda is the recommendation concerning the Community Redevelopment Agency meeting minutes for June 2nd, 2022. Right. Be I'd approved. entertain a motion if there's no comments. Move the item in the affirmative. Thank you. Robert. Second. Thank you. <laughs> All those in favor, please indicate by raising your hand. Seeing three, item passes three to zero. <clears throat> okay. Clear. Under, under the budget and finance, there are three um, agenda items. Uh, the first one is a recommendation concerning the residential rehab grant funding and lien agreements. There's an A and B for your review and approval. Second agreement, I mean, second recommendation is concerning the cancellation of the residential rehab grant program, and there's an A and B for your review and approval. The third recommendation is concerning the residential roof program funding and lien agreement, and there's an A and B for your review and approval. All right, entertain a motion for all, all the action items on the budget and finance. Move all three <coughs> A and Thank B you. in the affirmative. Second. Thank you. If there's no comments, I'll please vote. Aye. The three affirmatives, item passes three to zero. Any discussion, Clara? Um, I don't have any, but Bagash, if yeah, you want. Well, uh, yes. Mr. Um, Bagash. Yep. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, there's, a, there's an individual who is looking to um, utilize the program that we have out there for folks to make repairs to their homes in the Correct. CRA districts. And, um, you know, typically it's, it's, a, it's a repair that's made up front. Yes, sir. And if the property is fully insured, the county will, um, after two years, make a reimbursement. I, I believe that's the way it goes. Or, or they make a, a reimbursement. Yes. and then release the lien after two years that's correct okay so the reimbursement happens right away the lien gets released um it, there's a, there's an individual in particular who owns a home it's an older home it's not a real giant home but he owns it free and clear um his insurance went up significantly due to the fact that the roof is old so uh, like anyone else that lives in the cra he would like to take advantage of the program but because mm -hmm. his insurance rose dramatically to over eight thousand dollars a year from something like around a thousand yeah it, it he wants to get the roof and he wants to do the project, but he wants to, um, because he owns it free and clear, doesn't want to pay the insurance company and wants to essentially take the liability, self-insure, whatever term you want to use, but that precludes him from the program. And I understand the reasons why, but I was speaking with Clara before the meeting and, and, I'd, you know, and I'd asked her if, if we could entertain the idea of maybe looking at it a little bit differently, changing the paradigm, and, uh, because everyone has to make these repairs first out of pocket and then they get reimbursed. And the reason there's a two-year lien is it, in case something happens to the improvements, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we still kind of have some controlling interest. But in this particular case, since he doesn't have insurance, um, he's made the repair, um, perhaps we could do something for him to allow him to take advantage of the program with a stipulation that any reimbursement would occur no sooner than 24 months and only if there had not been a loss to the improvement uh, via a storm or something like that. I think it's reasonable um, and I think it's a unique situation and perhaps if there was some something that we could do, and I, I just would entertain any kind of discussion on that because I think it sounds fair. Uh, Jeff, I'd be happy to have a, uh, another discussion on. I don't know if it'll be this morning. Sure. Uh, of course, I, I know what you're talking about. Uh, he, he's talked to me, and um, you know, but part of it is is that that's that's the insurance uh, for for the program. If you you sell it or something happens to it, that that we'd still get our our money. Sure. And, and so it, it sounded like you said we would just hold off for 24 months on reimbursing him. Correct. Um, so we were out nothing. Right. You know, I, mean, I think that's the terms of the program anyway. No, no, but they get reimbursed right up front, Steve. I thought they got reimbursed after a period of time. Uh -uh. So um, once the project is complete and the board is approved it, then we do reimburse them once the, once the improvement has been done. But we hold yes, the lien. We hold and the then lien there's for a lien put years. on the property for two years. And once that lien has been in compliance, it's, it's removed. Okay, so it's the yes. lien that's 24 months. The reimbursement is upon the completion of the project. Correct. Okay. All right, Robert. Um, so I'd be looking into it. I, mean, okay. I think that's 
Yeah, I mean, to, to me, we, we're out nothing. He's he's a heap. Uh, if we reimburse after the two years, at the same time, the lien would be basically released, yeah. released anyway. That's yes. what I've asked. That's see. fine. I, I I wouldn't have an issue with that. And you good with we'll, that, Robert? Yeah. We'll wait and okay, see. Okay, that's what, three. Let's yeah. see. We'll wait and see what. I mean, I, it, conversationally, I'm good. I'm I'm fine with that. It's okay. You know, gonna it's gonna matter what. Uh, it's certainly gonna matter what Commissioner May has to say about it. Okay. But, well, uh, sure, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I appreciate the I'm discussion. Like I said, I normally yeah. wouldn't have done this, but. Constituent reached out, and I, I'm just trying to help them out. And I was going to say, I have another one as well. Is, okay. is I know in I think 2017 we put a moratorium on on signs uh, in CRA districts, and and so I had someone reach out who who wants to improve uh, his like building. Commercial facade. Good mm -hmm. commercial right. facade. Um, he, he's looking to do a mural, um, but it's uh, you know the the application fee through us is fifteen hundred and thirty dollars just to. To, to do that, and then he would have to make the improvements on top of it. Uh, he's in a CRA, um, but but we don't have any grants for that anymore. So um, oh, we put a moratorium on it, 2017. So well, let me ask you something, Robert. Revisit. I wasn't here for that, so I'd you know not as familiar with with why that happened. Again, on these on these outlier cases, you know, one by one, I, I just don't think there's anything, especially if it passes the common sense smell test, like the one that I just described does, because we're out nothing for 24 months. I mean, he's got everything to lose and nothing to gain unless he waits out the 24 months. In this particular instance, the $1,500 application fee, that, that seems a little stiff for something that just wants to essentially paint uh, a side of the building. That seems like something that perhaps we could look at. Uh, is that the normal, was that the normal fee before? Oh, it's not $1,500 for us. That's, that's, no, that's, the that's, that's the cost to get the mural. Right. Oh, okay. I thought you were saying the no, application fee no. was fifteen hundred. That's what well, I heard. Well, it it is. Right. Forrest, go ahead. Yes, yes, sir. For condition and oh. use approvals, oh. he would have to have condition use approval from the board of adjustments yeah. in order and because yeah. of that type. Oh, sorry, of it's not through the CRA, yeah, but the CRA stopped I mean, giving that's, the grants. But we still have, he has to get conditional. That's unrelated. I mean, really, right. yeah. that's well, an unrelated issue. Well, I, I, what, you know, Claire, what was the max on the facade grants when we were it doing was, the program? It, it was two thousand for the sign, and it was ten thousand for the facade. All right. I, you know, and I think the one I think one reason that we did put a moratorium on it was the was the the cap being so high on the facade, mm -hmm. you know, um, I'd, I'd be open-minded to revisiting, you know, implementing the program again, but maybe with a smaller cap on the facade side, okay. that's, it's just, that's larger than a lot of our other CRA grants. And right. it is a, right. it is a, you know, it is a grant, so it's not a loan. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if that cap was a little bit lower, it would still get, you know, I think we would still have participation if it was at 5,000, we'd still have participation. Plus we'd be able to do twice as many if they were doing large, you know, if they were doing large facades, and, and I, I don't remember specifically the discussions from five or six years ago, but it stands to reason that might have been the rationale, you know. Well, I appreciate the conversation. Thanks, guys. Yes. All right, thank you. Okay. Thank you. There's nothing more. This adjourned. All right. Do we need a couple minutes before we get into the review? Looking back to the uh, control booth. I'm going to assume that we don't. I got the thumbs up, so we're good to go. All right, good morning, everyone. This, this is the Board of County Commissioners Agenda Review Session, 2022, August 4th, 9, 10 a.m. Please turn yourself under the vibrate, silence, or offsetting. The Board of County Commissioners allows any person to speak regarding an item on the agenda. The speaker is limited to three minutes unless otherwise determined by the chairman to allow Sufficient time for all the speakers. Speakers shall refrain from abusive or profane remarks, disruptive outbursts, protests, or other behavior which interferes with the orderly conduct of the meeting. Upon completion of the public comment period, discussion is limited to board members and questions raised by the board. This evening, I'll be bringing the invocation. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Commissioner Bender, would you like to do that? I don't see you. Okay, Bender's gonna do that. Are there gonna be any items to be added to the agenda? It looks like one of them just got passed. Well, it's, it's in, she just confirmed, it's already on the agenda. Okay. Okay. Madam Attorney, any add-ons from you for tonight? Uh, no, sir, not that I'm aware of. Okay, Commissioner Bender. Uh, so it is what I handed out. It is up on the, the website under CART-2. Um, this is just uh, going back to say that we're getting an extra year of warranty coverage for the beach sign Fantastic. at no cost to us. So oh, That's good stuff. That's the kind of add-ons we like. Stephen, nothing from you? Okay. Uh, I don't know about Lumen and Commissioner Underhill. Uh, I'll have no add-ons. All right, uh, here we go. We're gonna keep going forward. Uh, Commissioner's forum, should we save that for tonight? What do you guys think? All right, we'll go ahead and save that for this evening. 
Uh, we're going to have proclamations. Any discussion on the proclamations tonight? We've got A, um, and I assume Bart Siders is going to bring that one. Where's Bart at? Yeah? Okay, Bart's bringing that one. B, we're going to ratify, and B and C are going to ratify proclamations. So, uh, did the clerk's office receive proofs of publication? I'll, of course, I'll ask you tonight, but this is one of my favorite parts of the meeting. Mr. Chairman, the clerk's office has received all proofs from the Escambia Sun Press. Escambia Sun Press, God bless them. We love them. All right, number, uh, moving to the public hearings this evening, we're going to have a couple public hearings. Uh, Horace, do you want to describe them? Anyone have any questions on these? You want to just describe them real yes, quick? Yes, so we have several um, rezoning case with a correction on the on the commissioner district for Tyree Roach. It should be District One. Yep, I and got I that. I think that is that is at the desk. Well, we're on. We're not there yet. We're on the public hearings. We're okay. just talking about the line. Ordinance is creating uh, sweet barbs MSBU. That's obviously in my district. Uh, Jeff, one, one second. Yeah. Horse, what's the percentage to to be requesting the MSBU? Is it seventy five percent of the lots? There's. Is it two thirds or three quarters? Somebody asked me that the other day, and I just said, I, I, I know it's a pretty high percentage, but. Well, we can find it out for you. All right, so that was, Stefan's walking. I thought it was two thirds, right? Was it two thirds? I, I'm not sure. Maybe it's two thirds. Stefan knows. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Commissioner, which, which type of uh, MSB? Just a lighting, lighting. MSB. 55%. 55. 55. 55, okay. Yes, sir. Right. Thank you. Thanks, we were all wrong. The different infrastructure is different percentages. So like the speed bumps is higher percentage. I don't know the exact percentages, but um, OMB runs those. Right on. Okay, so, so we got two of those tonight. Lighting MSBU is not a heavy lift. Moving forward to the clerk and comptroller's report. Pam Childers, you recognized. Thank you. There's two items on the agenda. You can review the backup on the investment report as well. Documents filed. Thank right. you. Any, any questions? Seeing none, we're going to keep cruising. All right, growth management. All right, Horace, here we go. Now, we got to be careful. These are all quasi-judicials tonight, right? So we got to be very careful. Are we even going to discuss this right now or tonight? I would not discuss them at Sorry, all. Horace. They're scheduled for this evening. You're good, man. Thank you. Yes, sir, again, we'll save we it have, off. We'll save yes, it all for tonight. Yes, sir, again, we have several of uh, these only cases, but I do want to make there's a correction on the commissioner district for Ty Ridge Road. Should be district one. I do want to make that, and I think that correction is at the desk. Um, then we have the... In sequential order, the adoption of the maps for the, each rezoning case that is stated separately. Then we have the Dry Creek as a um, commissioner uh, final plat for Dry Creek. Mm -hmm. Then we have the consent agenda. Right on. Thanks, Horace. We'll see you tonight. All right, the county administrator's report. We'll just go through them one by one. And of course, I always like to point this out. It looks like we're moving quickly up here. It's because we've had access to this backup and we've all had our individual debriefs with staff and made our own um, personal inquiries for anything that we want to discuss further and on top of that this is all uh, publicly accessible on our website all the backup everything that we have is publicly accessible so if it looks like we're moving quickly uh, it's because we are uh, because we've all done our homework already and uh, and looked at these things but obviously this evening uh, the public is welcome and invited and encouraged to speak at our meeting to anything um, on this agenda that you that concerns you. But today's session is for us, the staff, as a workshop, and the board members. So we're going to go through this rather quickly. Uh, car one, uh, recommendation number one concerning community re redevelopment agency meeting minutes. Number two, and I'm going to look for lights if you guys want anything. Recommendation concerning interlocal agreement between Escambia County and Workforce Escarosa. Number three, concerning reappointment to the Career Source Escarosa Board of Directors. Number four, recommendation concerning Workforce Escarosa Incorporated DBA Career Source Escarosa budget for the fiscal year 2022-2023. All right. Number five, recommendation concerning reinstatement of property for the Public Works Department. Number six, recommendation concerning the disposition of property for the Public Works Department. Number seven, recommendation concerning the reappointments to the Health and Facilities Authority Board. Number eight, recommendation concerning the order from service work order agreements between Escambia County and Infor Public Sector Incorporated. Seeing none, we'll move forward to CAR 2, Budget and Finance. This is a long agenda with a lot of items, um, but we'll go through them one by one to ensure that uh, any of the staff members or the board members that want to discuss it will be able to do so today, which would save us time in the evening meeting. Number one, recommendation concerning Escambia Consortium HUD FY22 Annual Action Plan. 
Number two, recommendation concerning uh, Lee Street sidewalks. Number three, recommendation concerning residential rehab grant program funding. Number four, recommendation concerning the cancellation of residential rehab grant program liens. Number five, recommendation concerning residential roof program funding and lien agreements. <clears throat> Number six, recommendation concerning approval of the Florida Power and Light contract for West Ridge Place Subdivision Street Lighting, MSBU. Recommendation number seven is concerning approval of Florida Power and Light light contract for the Busby Plantation Subdivision MSBU for street lighting. Number eight, recommendation concerning administrative budget amendment number 105 regarding the Pensacola Bay Center's request for ice floor repairs. Number nine, recommendation concerning the State of Florida 911 state grant agreement. Number 10, recommendation concerning the State of Florida 911 state grant agreement. Number 11, recommendation concerning change order number one for Granger Incorporated for station supplies, appliances, PPE, and equipment. Number 12, recommendation concerning the state funded grant agreement to update the hazardous materials facility analysis data. Number 13, recommendation concerning change order number two for specialty products incorporated for garage door maintenance. Number, thir uh, number 14, Recommendation for purchasing new marine assets for inland water resources. This is very cool. Eric, are you here somewhere? Yeah. Can you can you come forward? This is really, really cool. Um, and I think this is something the citizens probably need to know about. As I was reading the back up and reading about this, this is so that we can do high water re or, or rescues during floods and things of this nature and, and make um, rescues on the rivers. And That's correct. Okay. So it's uh, inland water rescue. So it's on the rivers and in flooding conditions. Uh, Unfortunately, like Bristol Park or something like that. Right. So it's a, uh, it's a double, double stack trailer. So it's got an inflatable on the top and a 16 foot aluminum boat on the bottom. Uh, 50 horse on the bottom, 30 horse on the top. The top motor comes off and mounts on the side of the trailer so it doesn't beat the transom mm -hmm. while it's going down the road. And we're getting two of those assets to be staged in the county so that we can have these water assets ready to go at any time. And are they going to be permanently stationed at, at certain fire stations? Or are you going to move them depending upon environmental well, weather Well, we're going to be permanently stationed at, uh, I think right now, four and three. Okay. Uh, Brent and uh, Cantonment is where we're going to permanently station them at right now. But if we have... You know, we, we got good predictions and we know where the flooding is going to be. We can stage them closer to the event. So, absolutely. I really appreciate your work to make this happen. But we're pretty excited about it. I mean, it's, it, it's an asset that we've needed for a while. So, thank you. Right on. Commissioner Bender? Yeah, I was going to say, so this is actually four boats, so it's two sets. Two sets. Two trailers, uh, two boats per trailer. Two boats, uh, a Zodiac yes, and an aluminum boat. So, yes, sir. Uh, so. Thank you. Perfect. Good stuff. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. And you got bunker year. The next item. Yeah, that's uh, item. You want to just stay while we go through all your the stuff. The next item is brush slash uh, extrication gear. So it's a dual, it's a dual set of gear. Uh, a lot of our uh, brush gear is out of date, uh, so we're having to buy brush gear. So we're, we went with a new vendor for our bunker gear, and they offer this kind of uh, gear up for us. So we're trying to you know trying to use to get the most for our, big, biggest bang for our buck. So smart to do. Thank you. All right, number sixteen, state law enforcement trust fund. Thanks, Garrett. Um, no question. Uh, Robert, you have your light on. Okay, number 17, disposition of property for the property appraiser's office. Number 18, issuance of a purchase order to Convergent for replacing existing XAC servers. And Bart, I believe, spoke to, or said he was gonna speak to all the board members. He spoke to me and explained some things. So Bart, appreciate the heads up on, on some of these things. Thank you. Uh, number 19, recommendation concerning the issuance of a purchase order to CDW for the Adobe Enterprise Licensing Renewal. Number 20, recommendation concerning a purchase order for plan source benefits administration in excess of 25,000. I know Crystal, you had a couple of different items that you wanted to discuss. Would you want to come forward and speak to that this morning to save us time this evening or what's your preference on that? Yes, okay, all right. Um, is this the item or is it the one further down the agenda? Okay, all right, do you have any? Okay, no, uh, thank you. Number 21, recommendation concerning insurance premium assessment for the Bob Sykes Bridge. I spoke to Stefan, apparently that's a routine thing. Uh, number 22, recommendation concerning the contract award for temporary labor services. Number 23, recommendation concerning the ratification of the memorandum of agreement between the Escambia Board of County Commissioners and the Amalgamated Transit Union Local 1395 AFL-CIO Operational Unit. Hey, Jeff, yes. I, was, I was actually on the radio this morning and had a chance to talk about this. Good. Uh, Good. Uh, it's, uh, a lot of these are going up 2 to $3. Um, and, and so 
uh, I know it's an area where, where we need some staff and um, and so hopefully this can help uh, but I mean that's a, a pretty big big jump for some of those um, and uh, and hopefully uh, I, again, I'm, I'm proud to see this coming forward. Yeah, thank you, and, and I'll echo that sentiment. And a lot of the credit goes to Wes Marino and, and his team, the bargaining team from the county side. And frankly, I'll give a little credit to Mike Lowry. He, uh, he stepped up to make sure it got done for the operational unit. And I'm, gl I'm certainly glad to see them get those raises. So good stuff. All right, uh, next 24, recommendation concerning issuance of a purchase order to the school district for the tennis court project. Now, uh, Mike, Michael Rhodes, could you please step up? I mean, I, look, I'm going to support it. I'm, as everyone knows, I'm a huge supporter of the schools. Uh, I just didn't know, I had never seen anything like this before. Um, and when I spoke to staff about it yesterday, I was told this was a, an, an agreement between the county and the school board. So I just, I didn't see that in the back of, when, when was that deal? Yeah, but I'm going to support it. But. Several years ago, um, myself, Claire Long, and the school board sat and uh, discussed um, the need for tennis yes. in the inner city in District 3. And the school board obviously had the property, and we were meeting with several nonprofits, uh, District 3, along with Clara, myself, um, and several other members of the community, nonprofits. Um, and we agreed to contribute $60,000 of Parks LOST money that was originally in the Inglewood project transferred over to support that with the very clear understanding that those tennis courts would be open for public use. That was my question, yeah. Well, Commissioner May made sure we had that in there, okay. that the courts would be open for public use during non-school programmed hours, along with programming at the Ebonwood Community Center, which sits adjacent to the Oakcrest Tennis uh, ten, uh, elementary property. Fantastic. Now we're speaking of tennis, uh, kind of unrelated, but not necessarily <laughs> unrelated. We, this board appropriated 1.3 million for the city and the repairs at Roger Scott. I might be asking the wrong person, uh, and I hate to put you on the spot, but where are we at on that? Because I have some people bugging me about it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> unfortunately, it I, I, I apologize, but I don't have any information necessarily on the uh, Roger Scott tennis upgrades okay. and Does so Does anyone forth. from staff have any uh, idea? I mean, I, Jeff, I know. I mean, the, yeah, Robert's the your district is now. that they just had a, their uh, procurement. First one came back too high, and, and they felt like they uh, had maybe been um, uh, too tight on the timeline. Mm -hmm. And so they, they adjusted it. It, it. I think it came back a week or two ago, and it seems that it was still a little high. Uh, so I haven't talked with Grover yet on what he wants to do next, but they, it, they're, they're working it. Uh, trying to keep it going but but we don't they don't they do not have a contract signed <clears throat> with a vendor yet for the update and repair yeah because we were going to play we were going to play in the bud light hopefully in the in the time that uh, it could have been done but um well i i, I play out there quite frequent i'm a yeah. member i you know i pay the membership fee i play out there but, but the hard courts in particular robert i mean I, you know i love that facility but those yeah. hard courts are in really bad shape to a point where there's cracks that are so big that people actually trip and lose sure. their footing. I mean, I'm just worried about from a, you know, obviously it's the cities, but it's a, it's a regional asset that we all use. And I'm a big supporter and of tennis. I think it's a great sport. I think Grover is as well. So I, I would expect to, they're, they're definitely working on trying to, to get this project okay. going. As long as they don't need more money. That's, that's the main thing. Again, in, cl in closing for the Oak Crest thing, yes, we made it again, very clear with the school board, with Sean Dennis and their respective representatives that it would be open to the general public during non-school programmed hours. So that was a key factor in us, uh, this agreement. It's a great deal. Thank I'm you. I'm going to vote for it. Stephen, you had your light on. My apologies. Uh, I, I was just going to say, Linda Bonifay from, uh, from Oak Crest School was also, I mean, you know, at some of the had a relationship with GSI that helped a lot with the summer program at Ebonwood. So I went to, you know, a number of those events over there. And that was something that Linda Bonifay expressed, uh, you know, quite a bit of interest in and trying to, you know, trying to encourage some of her students at the, uh, you know, at the elementary school to, to get involved in. So it, it has been a discussion going on for a number of years. Fantastic. Uh, I haven't been part of the discussions that Michael has with, you know, leadership from the district, but on the, on the, you know, boots on the ground level, they were very interested. Well, I think it's fantastic. It's great. That's the example of working together. I like it. All right. Um, number 20. Sorry, Joe. Yeah. Uh, I just, uh, I know we went over it. He's not used to being so high up on the agenda, but I did see Michael Capps um, walk in. Yes. Uh, and I know we didn't mention it, but uh, I did have a question for him real sure. quick on Michael, another unrelated yeah. uh, matter. So uh, I think it was on, on Monday, I, I texted him uh, last week and uh, and asked about the update on replacing the, the 
the video boards outside the signs. Yes, sir. Uh, he's got he's got some news that I want him to, to share. So Fantastic. Knows where we recognize. Absolutely. And I apologize for the delay. Wasn't aware I'd be that quick. But uh, we've got Sportsman's Night out tonight uh, with Marcus Point Baptist. Going to have over 5,500 people in the in the arena tonight. It's really great. They've expounded so much. They've they've moved to to the building. Want to make it an annual event. Um, so for the Marquis, uh, yes, we are set to start demo on Friday tomorrow. Uh, we should have the crane delivery, and it should take about a day and a half to take down the front marquee. Uh, and then they'll start on the back. We were waiting on the back to make sure FEMA had some questions clarified uh, so we'd make sure the funding was all in order. Um, and the only questions that they had was to make sure that the, we were using the existing foundation, which we are, uh, and to making sure where the, the proper the materials were being disposed of, which we've got that tracked as well. So the demo should be completed for the front and the back by uh, August 10th next week, just in time for Lee Bryce on the 11th. Uh, the LEDs are in California. Um, we're not exactly sure where they're in California, what port or box they're in, um, but they are trying to get those out and in transit. Right now they're scheduled to be here on the 15th and start to install and be completed by the end of August. That's great. So news. that's good. Yeah, I mean, I know it's, uh, I know it's something we've all been interested in. Uh, again, dealing with FEMA, you've, you've got hurdles to jump through. And, um, and I, in fact, I think we've got one uh, coming up for us that a project that we've been working through that FEMA just says, okay, you can go ahead and go, but you still have some, some questions. So um, I, I know it's something that we've all all looked forward to, to, to getting those replaced and and part of its <clears throat> logistics and, and dealing with FEMA, but uh, glad to see that it's the time is now. Yes, so that's, sir. That's we're, great. we're looking forward. Our, our main sponsor for that is uh, ready to go with West Florida Healthcare. Um, they've been ready and waiting. We've got their art. It's loaded. We're just ready to put it up. Perfect. Yeah, Mike. Um, <clears throat> I haven't seen you in, in the chambers since the since the event this spring, the tournament. Yes, sir. Um, and I just want to say, y'all did a fantastic job. And um, you know, it's uh, uh, you know, I'm sure it was a, a lot more fun this year without having to try to navigate, <clears throat> you know, the COVID issues of the previous year. But um, I, th I thought y'all did a fantastic job, and the event was, you know, certainly uh, you know viewed objectively as a huge success. So, I mean, I know that's, you know, due in large part to, to your work. I know uh, Ray Palmer at the PSA had, you know, a lot to do with it. Michael mm -hmm. had a lot to do with it, but it's uh, uh, due in large part to you and your staff. So thank you for that. It was a huge success and look forward to those folks uh, being here for many years. Yes, sir. Thank you. And, and our team enjoys that event. We love the work to put in and uh, it's, it is truly a great collaboration with Escambia County, uh, Pensacola Sports. Uh, visit Pensacola and City of Pensacola. We are, everybody came together to really make that a hit, and uh, we're looking forward to every time we do an event. We want to find a new way to make it better, enhance the experience for everybody coming, uh, as well as the bottom line. Uh, we're looking at all angles. But thank you. And, and you had mentioned that you you wanted that sign up in time for Lee Bryce, and I think that's great. But I think it's more important to have it up in time for a day to remember on October first. By the way, hopefully that's selling well. I hope because that's a Seems like a pretty good concert. I'll tell you, Data Rimmer is great. It, it got out of the box about 23, 2400. Uh, we, we, know we haven't seen those kind of numbers in, in a while, so it's selling well. Uh, we also have uh, Christ for All Nations is coming up in September. They'll be here for an entire week. Uh, the last time they were here in 2019, they, we clicked in uh, over 30,000 people over the four days. Fantastic. Uh, so that's coming up. We've got a, a, we're get, looking forward to it. Awesome. Thank you, Michael, for Absolutely. being here. Absolutely. All right. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Okay. So I think we're at uh, we're at 25 is where we were. Purchase orders in excess of 25 grand. Parks and Rec. Any questions? Nope. 26. Agreement to the professional staff services for small quantity generator program. It's coming out of solid waste, so that's perfect. Number 27. Recommendation concerning the award of purchase order for general laboratory services. Number 28. Recommendation concerning purchase order of a used 2021 Ford Expedition. No issues. 29. Recommendation concerning the purchase of three 2022 Ford Explorers for engineering, traffic, construction, management. Number 30. Recommendation concerning change order number one to purchase order 220106, Office Depot for office and operational related supplies for West Florida Public Library. All right. Nothing there. Number 31, recommendation concerning change order number two to purchase order 220081, Demco Incorporated for library supplies. Number 32, recommendation concerning change order number one to purchase order 220535, Brodart Company for books for West Florida Public Library, Todd Humble. 
All right. Number 33, recommendation concerning a donation to West Florida Public Library from the Joint revo Revocable Trust of Frank W. Schaefer and Marion Rose Schaefer. And that's good stuff. And that's it for the library. So since we're kind of talking about libraries right now, I have some news in case no one knows yet. Uh, we have a groundbreaking, uh, I'm sorry, ribbon cutting date for the Bellevue Library in District 1 will be September uh, 16th at 11 in the morning. It's a Friday. Um, Todd, we're still tracking for that? It's been a long time. You want to come forward? It's been a long time coming. We've had COVID. We've had all kinds of issues. The, the construction site's been robbed six or seven or 10 or 12 times. Um, it's all kinds of problems, but we're bringing it all together, right? It's coming yeah. together. Yeah, we should be okay. We've The shelving manufacturer still hasn't delivered our shelving, but um, we've still got plenty of time to make that up as far as getting things mounted inside. Um, they're working on in, uh, occupancy, temporary occupancy inspections this week. Um, and then depending on what they find, we should get the uh, final shortly thereafter. We should appear to still be on track for the 16th without 16th. a problem. September 16th. Thank yeah. you, Todd. And then also the 17th, we're planning a big event for Harry Potter. So it'll be really busy there. Yeah. Um, this is the, I believe, the 25th anniversary of Harry Potter. At the Bellevue Library you're doing it? At the Bellevue Library. Fantastic. All right. I might have to check that one out, too. All right. Very good. We're going to move forward now to number 34, recommendation concerning the issuance of a purchase order in excess of 25 grand to train for the IT computer room. Next one, 35, recommendation concerning the issue of a purchase order in excess of 25 grand to train for public safety equipment replacement. Number 36, recommendation concerning the issuance of a purchase order in, the ex in excess of 25 grand to train for the replacement of the AFD drive on Childer 2 at the central office complex. And number 37, recommendation concerning the contract approval for the Hurricane Sally roof replacement at Ernie Lee McGehey building. That's a big deal, that's a good thing, yeah. I got water coming in my windows. It's good. We're going to get it fixed. All right. Number 38, re recommendation concerning the acceptance of two public road and right-of-way easements for the Perdido Key multi-use path. Number 39, recommendation concerning change order number one on contract PD 1920.043 to Hernandez Calhoun Design International for the Escambia County Tax Collector Building. Number 40, recommendation concerning the contract approval for Hurricane Sally roof replacement at the Road Ops Garage Building. Number 41, recommendation concerning modification number four to the contract award for construction of Lake Charlene Drainage Improvement Project, PD 21-22.031. And I know that um, I don't believe Joy Blackman is here today. And I, I just, uh, in case anyone in the room doesn't know, um, her mother passed away last night. So our condolences, our thoughts, our prayers are with Joy Blackman and her family. So um, any questions on that? Tonight, I guess we'll, uh, we'll have other staff members prepared to answer the questions. Uh, number 42, recommendation concerning a preliminary engineering agreement between CSX Transportation and Escambia County, Florida for the East Olive Roadway Improvements Project. Robert, you're recognized. I, I just, the best I can guess is probably District 3, not District 4. Uh, Olive Road? It, I know it kind of, well, west, west yeah. of, I mean, west of, uh, I, I cannot think of a, a railroad crossing between Jernigan and, and uh, so it's the west side. So I think it, it might be three. All I know uh, is whenever whenever I see these, it's a good thing. Yeah. It just means so, there's a but I just, horrible uh, intersection or a, yeah. or a problem. But uh, anyway, nothing other well, than that. It's good other than the fact that we have to pay for anything that yeah. is, involves the railroad. Yeah. And I we pay that. for everything. But other than that, yeah, it's all good. Other than that, it's good. Yeah. Well, it's good for the it's good for the citizens when we fix them. But we're pay but you're paying for it. Citizens are paying for it. All right, uh, number forty three recommendation concerning disposition of property for the engineering department. Number forty four recommendation concerning the contract award for design services for the Weimart Road sidewalks and drainage project. All right, number forty five recommendation concerning the contract award for design services for sidewalks throughout multiple county districts. It's good stuff here. This is good stuff. Number 46, recommendation concerning the contract award for the Upland Road Drainage Improvements FEMA Project, PD 21-22.22.085. Number 47, recommendation concerning the issuance of change order number two to Roads, Inc., Northwest Florida. Number 
48, recommendation concerning the supplemental budget amendment number 22-SBA-65 for the State of Florida Department of Environmental Protection Standard Grant Agreement for the Perdido Key Multi-Use Path East Phase Recreational Trails Program Grant Contract. Hey, so that's a mouthful. Yeah. Which hey, just on 47, it, 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 Stephen, and I'm, I'm guessing, I don't know if you've talked to him or who, who did, but I didn't know if there's a way to, to add anything else to it. Uh, because I know that uh, um, I think we've got North Point. Uh, we're, we're, we certainly might have half the subdivision that's somewhat uh, uh, scheduled. Uh, I think the other half would be coming later. But of course, we'd rather do it all at once because you know we just did some other roads uh, just south of Olive and are actually off of uh, Creighton. And uh, as soon as you do one, you, you get all these phone calls of, "Well, my, my road's a lot worse than, <laughs> right. than the one you did." Right. Um, so I, I didn't know if. if uh, we're able to add anything, or is it, if this is just a so, so this um, this original contract <clears throat> is our resurfacing portfolio from last year. That <clears throat> you know, for for perhaps a myriad of reasons, um, has not begun yet. So, uh, uh, but I'm told it's supposed to begin later this month. Um, so, I mean, but that is there's. You know, there's a pretty large portfolio of work to be done. So I would think that that is a, I would think that that's reasonable. Um, I wouldn't presume James Duncan is here. Um, okay, so um, just for my, for just, you know, you and I talking about how this kind of came about, um, I would, you know, either have J Angela talk to James or talk to James about what, <clears throat> you know, I'm not sure. I mean, I know where North Point is. I'm not sure exactly what you're talking about, but, um, I would think that uh, that he would be able to continue having some communication with Rhodes, especially it's you know if it were to come back, <clears throat> you know whether the second meeting in August or the first meeting in September or something, they're not going to be complete with the work that they're doing with the with the with that portfolio yet. So I'd certainly I'd be open-minded to that, and that's that's the that's kind of the avenue that uh, that I went to get this done. So I would think that's uh, a reasonable. Thing to okay. forward with. And, and that's as you said, this is the 21 22 exactly. list of projects. So we're just finishing the 2021 20, project. So, um, all right, I'll work on that. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. So, uh, 48, we've already gone through that. 49, uh, recommendation concerning the issuance of change order number two to site and utility. Number 50, recommendation concerning supplemental budget amendment for the fiscal year 2022 reimbursements. Number 51, recommendation concerning approval of the Florida Power and Light contract for the Dogwood Terrace Tar and Turpentine Subdivision Street Lighting. Number 52, recommendation concerning the contract extension for inmate goods and cleaning supplies, PD 18-19.041. Everything's going up. Costs are going up. Prices are going up. Number 53, recommendation concerning change order number one to purchase order 220453 for Big Charlie's Produce. Nothing. 54, recommendation concerning a change order number one to purchase order 220448 to the merchant's company. Number 56, recommendation concerning change order number one to purchase order 220486 for Charles Neely Corporation DBA PR Chemical Supply and Suppl uh, Paper and Supply. Jeff, I have a question about that. Yes, sir. One. Oh, is Rich here? Morning. Morning. Um, and, you know, I don't know exactly what Charles Neely PR Chemical Paper does, but, I, you know, I have some idea just from, you know, being around restaurants over the years of, of kind of what they do. Um, and I don't necessarily have an issue with the change order, but is it for additional copy paper? Is that an accurate reflection of what this change order is for? That doesn't uh, make it's sense. It's one of the biggest things we buy from them due to the fact that they're like $20 a case cheaper. Than, than other places that's PR, what, PR chemical is yes, that much cheaper for copy yes, paper yeah I think we have one bid was 50 and I think there's is at 30 if I'm not mistaken some change off there obviously but and I mean I got it right here yeah, so do y'all use do you do you use the same and I don't technically know a lot about copy paper but do you use the same quality yes, copy sir. paper that the rest of the county does yes sir what well, does the county buy all of the copy paper from this I'm not PR sure. chemical paper good question well, we should, we should evidently. If we're if we're not, we should be. Yeah, if that's <laughs> Donna saying, some do. Yes, sir. 
uh, some of the other departments do use it. Public safety has been using the PR chemicals for their. Patients. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, I, I know Stefan's in the back, and it's not necessarily come forward, but let's let's take a hard look at anybody buying paper, buying copy paper from anywhere else. Yes, uh, evidently, if I mean these numbers are accurate, that's a substantial. I mean, that's a huge Very decrease, and that's I just. I'm oh, sorry, Jeff. Yeah. I just I didn't realize that they were the market for copy paper. Yeah, me neither. They sell a lot of things. So. Yeah, I got you. So it looks it, it looks like merchants paper was cheaper, but then they said they can't offer it anymore. So this is still six dollars higher than what merchants had been, but maybe cheaper than what is out there for everybody else. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Uh, when this. Uh, recommendation came through uh, right. and asked to be approved. Uh, I actually went back and looked at Staples uh, and our Amazon business account, yeah. and the pricing that we're getting is fairly in line within a dollar or so per case of what they're talking about from uh, this new vendor. Okay, so every, it's Every, everything okay. we're doing is kind of in line already. Okay, so uh, but it, it, it doesn't mean it can't be researched further. So. Okay, so their example of the price gap, it's still a, it's still the best place to have them buy more copy paper, but it's not necessarily a twenty dollar case gap. It's maybe a dollar or something. Correct. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Thank you, Correct. Jeff. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, number fifty six, recommendation concerning a memorandum of understanding between the school board of Escambia County, Florida, and Escambia County. Wait a minute. They're no longer the school board of Escambia County. They are Escambia County Public Schools, right? Didn't they change that last night? It was on the news. Okay, yeah. whatever. Hey, Jeff, I, I just want to say that I think this is an awesome program that, I do that too. we're doing. It's welding program welding. For, for incarcerated individuals that they, yeah. they can have a trade when they come out. So, Yep, we've done that for many, many years. I remember approving the contract when I was on the school board, and it was good. It's a great program, and a lot of those guys get pulled out before they even graduate because they get hired. That's how quickly they get hired. It's a great line of work for some people. Okay, so... Um, all right, uh, next up, number 57, authorization to take action concerning defaulted contracts for reimbursement of training expenses and hiring bonuses. All right, <laughs> Jeff. Yes, sir. On this, you know, if you look at what some of these dollar amounts are, I don't know what it costs to pursue somebody for defaulted, you right. know, for defaulted, uh, you know, bonuses. It's, it's some number. I mean, it, it, it's, I don't know, it's, if it's $500 or $1,000, I mean, and we should be able to arrive at, at some number that we say, look, it's de minimis return or actually a negative return on the public's dollar to pursue somebody for $147. You know, so I think if, you know, the board, I guess, controls the policy, this is our policy to pursue people, that's a, that's a good thing, it's in the taxpayer's best interest. But it's, I think, additionally in the taxpayer's best interest to set some, set some minimum threshold at which we pursue. Sure. And I, I, I don't know what that number is. I'm sure Allison has some idea. I would but. suggest at least a thousand should be owed, if not even a little more. If it's less than a thousand dollars, it seems to be sort of diminishing returns. You're also overwhelming the small claims division, in my personal opinion. They actually require in-person mediations on these things and that sort of stuff. It is, it is very difficult for them to cope with filing dozens of these things at once, yes, understood. in my opinion. So I would say that somebody needs to owe back to the county at least $1,000 or more before you all vote to have us file a claim against them. And I know that at least a half dozen of these on this list don't right. meet that can threshold. We, can we change, can we, Ta okay, so if we take action tonight, can you uh, can you highlight the ones that are more? Uh, yeah, you're I saying can. a thousand. Highlight the ones that are more than a thousand. I don't mind making an amendment to the item to pursue you know A, B, and C and not D, E, F. Sure, on, on or you can just say tonight. you know that you're willing to pursue. You, you're directing us to pursue any of these unless they don't meet a minimum threshold of owing at least a thousand dollars. Well, I thought that that would be a policy that you were saying that you were going to tell me we would have to bring back if, bring back. If we can change the policy tonight, then that's fine too. Can we can we go ahead and change the policy? The, I do know that there are efforts that are already afoot that you're going to be seeing uh, coming forward because I was involved in a meeting where they're tightening up some of the contractual language and the way some of these things are operating to make it less likely that folks walk out the door as soon as they get the <laughs> incentive or whatever. Right. I know there have been a lot of them that it just hasn't worked out great. Within a couple of weeks, they get their money and they walk. Yeah. So um, I do know that that effort is afoot with your administrator to try to tighten up 
either the contract or the program or both mm -hmm. with regards to some of these departments. Um, but yeah, I can certainly bring back for this evening. In fact, we'll email it to you. At least a half dozen of these folks don't owe a thousand dollars or more. They owe less than that. Yeah, Robert. Um, so a couple things. One, um, I mean, if, if we're seeing that after six weeks is where these people are typically walking, are we able to hold off on giving these for the six weeks? I mean, it, I, seems, so, it seems like that would be the thing to do, right? You wait well, six I think months, they're changing. Six so get it. Re remember, it needs to still be based upon it being an incentive or a recruitment yep. uh, incentive. And so um, as long as we're phrasing it in that way, I think the change is they're going to not allow the money released until the 91st day okay. of employment. Okay. Because so, right. so uh, I think they had folks that were working a week and leaving seriously. I mean, yeah. just really bad. Well, and, and, and that's, I'm, Stephen, that's why I'm just going to interject here. I'm, I'm supportive of that. However, I think, um, you know, we got to be very careful because we don't want word out on the street. Well, yeah, you can go get it and then, you know, pay it down to a thousand and then they're not going to come after us. I think there has to be a stick and a carrot type mentality. So I'd be supportive of, um, okay, if it's less than a thousand, then, then we won't pursue it, but it is a debt that's owed. So a credit report, a, a negative on the credit, I would say, go for that. And, and you tell people you either do this or you're going to pay. And are we a reporting agency? Yeah, I don't. I mean, you'd I'm have to sure get a. I, I, I mean, I don't know. However, how, however, you make that work because I don't like deadbeat stiffs, right? And I don't think taxpayers should do that. I mean, we're we're in good faith offering a good career. Folks are taking the money and walking away. It's a, it's the a principle of the thing. If we're a reporting agency, I don't have an issue with that. Okay. I, I just I, I, don't, know, I don't know if we are or not. If they ever if they ever come back to work for us, they have to pay it before they would be reemployed. I'm not saying that they would, but if they did, you never know. In five, ten years, someone gets desperate, they'd come back. And then number three, I think that. And I don't know if this is with the legality of it. That's why we have a lawyer on the dais. But if someone, if they go down the street, take their training they got with us and want to go work for Scooby-Doo's correction, then we would be able to say, but by the way, they left um, and did not uh, honor their commitment and did not repay the loan. I don't know if that's legal. You tell me if it is. I, I know typically you can just verify dates for what, the What does the Department of Corrections do as a public agency? I'm no, I don't know. We don't know. I mean, that's, uh, well. If we're having this this much discussion about it, I think it's worth knowing what DCI does yeah. to or DOC does to uh, handle their incentives. I mean, they've they've they have imp they've had an uh, an incentive implementation program for years, years and years. So they do it somehow. I just I don't. I, I know that your um, I, I know that your internal staff is is working on this. They're they're looking again at the training programs for both public safety as well as corrections. And they are looking at bringing some tweaks to all of that to you. So, so I mean, I think it sounds like the 91st day. That's still an incentive bonus, and and um, and sounds like that's a step in the right direction. Then make sure that it's something for them, um, and and, it, and it's the money would, would still be coming. Um, I I would have I, Jeff. I like where you are. I, I don't know what what the the abil our ability to actually track people. Uh, after they've left to right. see where they've gone to work unless you know somehow you come across them or, or whatever um, and I, I I didn't know if there's you know any way to hold the last paycheck or anything like that if, that's kind of what I was thinking if, too. if there's also a you know like a two hundred and twenty five dollars or something like that this is one of the ones on here um, are we able to put in in the in the system that that they have a outstanding you know, commitment or something like that, that uh, when they separate, that 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 gets looked into at least. Yeah. I, look, I think I think it's a good discussion to, to have because the taxpayers are watching. I mean, we, we put a lot of money out. We give a lot of raises, a lot of bonuses. We're doing everything we can to hire these positions. And if people take yeah. advantage and come in and get some training, get some skills, and then decide to go across the street, we ought to be able to get that money back. And But I get it. I mean, not if it costs us 50 cents to recover a quarter. I mean, we're not going to do that. But other than that, um, I'd like to get every dime back. Um, Crystal, can we withhold? I liked his idea on withholding their paycheck. I know some places, if you don't turn in the key or the badge, they can hold. Can we withhold that amount of their paycheck? Uh, or is that against some law somewhere or the union contract? Yes, so we actually just talked about this with legal this week. And we can withhold all the money as far as like leave payout. But as far as wages, we just can't take them down past minimum but wage. But if they're brand new, they're not going to have enough leave to cover it. Right. Right. So it's the people that are leaving on their final paycheck. But we can withhold that just that portion. Correct. Yes. But it's not enough to cover if they just got for the most part. No. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll uh, obviously, there's more meat on the bone. We look forward to hearing what 
what Rich brings back. Tonight, yes. are you just going to highlight the names that we want to move forward with I, and then deal with the policies later? I, yeah, because I know they're still That's working why. on okay. several things, and I know Wes okay. hasn't had the opportunity to touch some of that. Okay. So, yeah. right. Rich, did you want to say yeah, something you're right, sir? Uh, just understand that there's sometimes two different areas that we're recouping, the incentive salary as well as training funds, if they've gone through training. And that combination, if it exceeds a dollar amount, that's what I would, I would hope we get to because and that's both the, of them are impacted. And that's a good point because if we paid to train them, they're leaving, and, and you know, I'm sure you know, that some of them say this, I don't want to be in this line of work, and they quit. But some of them get the training, and then they go work across they the do. street. We, we can track that through ATMS, which is a, a statewide. Uh, we go from one department to other. It's all statewide, so we can see where they go. And we're not trying to put people on a cross, but are you, when they call for a reference, what do you tell them? Um, well, we go stay within legal bounds. We, Which are? limited to what we can say. I asked the question earlier. Allison, they're employable or not. Can we tell them they stiffed us on the training? I, uh, I'm just trying to know. I never get a straight answer I, from lawyers. I, I, uh. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Go to, go to the judge. Ask him. Yeah. He, yeah. That's a good question. I, I do get straight answers from him. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. Um, I, can we I'll can certainly if take someone, a look at it. I mean, the, the training contracts are certainly public records. We can offer them public records. Maybe we need to. Train I mean, these our are all public records. So you can certainly provide public records. Because if we pay to train someone in the, uh, with the, you know with the expectation they're coming work for us and then they find, you know, $2.50 more across the street and they go, you know, they ought to pay us back. And if they don't, I don't think we owe them a good reference, period. Uh, you guys might disagree with me. I don't know. We'll have a discussion about it. Oh, I'd, I'd say if, if we're that far out of whack, you know, I'm, I know you gave an example, but, you know, I mean, I thought we, we did a pretty, pretty good pay raise last year. We did. Um, to, to, to get us up there and, and you know, that, that's yeah go the majority ahead of the ones that we are seeing truly are the ones that are failing out of the academy or failing out of through their 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 after post academy training that through the fto program that's what we're seeing a lot of they're not jumping ship to go to another agency that they're, they're leaving because they failed to meet the standards that we've established okay well, okay that's good to and that's what i say because again it's as with this we, we spend a lot to train somebody and if we're losing people for a dollar or two or something like that then then I think we need to look yeah, that's into not that. The pri but primary is, is that they they, well, they, they wash made, out. They either don't make it through, they wash out. That's a simple yeah. terminology. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Well, there's more conversation to have, but that was a good one. Anything else, guys? All right, we're going to keep moving forward. Number 58, for, uh, recommendation concerning the first of two possible one year renewals with Gauls for corrections uniforms. Number 59, recommendation concerning the purchase of maintenance equipment for a Scamby County area transit. Number 60, recommendation concerning the purchase of radio communications equipment for Escambia County Area Transit. Number 61, recommendation concerning a Center for Excellence of Pensacola, Jamie's Mom's House, Holes for Hope. From my discretionary, number 62, recommendation concerning the funding of Alger Sullivan Historical so Society for 5,000 from Commissioner Stephen Berry. Number 63, recommendation concerning feeding the Gulf Coast mobile pantry distribution at the Molino Community Center, Commissioner Stephen Berry. All right. No. Yes. And then so that add-on is 64 that I distributed. Oh earlier. yes. So yes, that, yes. it is on there. So got it. Uh, and that's a recommendation concerning amendment approval for contract PD 2122060 between us and Guardfish Enterprises uh, for the Pensacola Beach sign. And that and what does that do? Provide an extra year warranty. Provides an extra year warranty. Yes, that's sir. That's fantastic. Because based on the track track records, we probably we might need it. All right. Uh, discussion items. Okay. Crystal. USI Insurance, you are recognized if you want to come forward. We've got a discussion uh, around USI Insurance Services benefits renewal discussion. And I believe they have a presentation for us as well. And Crystal, before you start, I just want to thank you for taking time to speak with me about this issue specifically and walking me through it. Uh, I greatly appreciate that. Thank you. Anyway. Absolutely. Recognize. And same commissioners to most of you. Um, it takes a lot of time and hard work to go over benchmark analysis, get all of our data collected to be able to have those types of conversations. So USI is here today. Um, going to go over some preliminary measures and some data and analysis that we conducted. Um, we want to go through pretty much all of the benefits today, gather some feedback from you all to see if, you know, changes in plan design changes. I think any... you got the wrong presentation up on that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 
Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Which, Jeff, that, that project that was up there, that's great, too. That yeah, is a good project. Something that yeah. we finally got across the line. Boy, that, took, that was like pulling teeth right. out of the grizzly. Very expensive. <laughs> So the big colorful placemat that we attach to the backup, that's what we're going to be covering. There's a... Hey, I was going to say, David, it is back up online if you just want to pull it up online. I don't know if you're... So, David, it, it's online on the agenda if, if we can uh, access it through the website. And pull that up. Um, in the meantime, I'll go ahead and introduce Ms. Monica Thomas. She is the account executive for our account from USI. We also have Marty Stanley here. She's the VP of Key Accounts. So they'll also be able to answer any questions that you guys have. Good morning. So we're gonna talk about the um, 2023 benefits renewal options recommendations and next steps. So we're going to start with the budget. The 2022 budget decisions that were made were some very good decisions. And as a result, we're trending below budget for this year. And based on that, even though we have a few more months to go, the budget is expected to end at about 96% of budget. So that's a good thing. You guys are running below budget. With that in mind, the 2023 budget we're recommending an 8% increase with no changes to the benefits. So I just, it's not up there yet, but uh, for anyone who's looking, it says based on 2330 employees, those are not all our, our staff, that would be the constitutionals and everything else. Just so if anyone sees that, we don't have 2330 employees, that is throughout the county, right. not just ours, so, okay. Is anyone watching? I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure, but uh, it was, of, of course, because we had the discussion earlier about cutting back our numbers, and so I don't want people to think that it, our, it's just us based on 2330s. So. No problem. Any questions on that part? On that? Okay. So the next recommendation is on the medical ASO, which is the administrative services that are offered by Florida Blue. The recommendation is to maintain that relationship and renew with Florida Blue. Um, at the 2023 negotiated fee. Now for the stop loss, that is still under um, negotiation. We're expecting that the stop loss renewal is going to, um, the final and firm provisions are gonna be provided within the next 60 days. Okay, and we'll be pre prepared to give you guys an update at the next meeting. Mr. Chairman, yes, I, I'd like to specifically talk about some more, about that some more. Is that a part of, and Forgive me, I, I can't see the president. Is that a part of the presentation where we, where it outlines the stop loss, like how many people triggered the stop loss in our, in our health insurance and those kind of, that kind of information? We have provided the number of vendors that we went to for stop loss, um, but with the stop loss, they don't really give us firm numbers until they have a certain amount of claims, months of claims. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, and maybe this was more a part of the first discussion, or. I, or maybe it's more appropriate later, I don't know, but I'm just gonna talk about it. So, all right, um, part, of, part of my question, or my question is when, okay, anecdotally, we've been told over, you know, the years since we've went self-insured, it was before you were on the board, we've been self-insured since, bef since before you, okay, so maybe 14, 14 or 15, um, you came on at 16? 16. Okay, um, that we've got, you know, a handful of claims that, that are, okay, the large claimant report, okay. So, where, do, where does it kick in? So, it kicks in at 270, 275, is that where our stop loss kicks in? That's where your individual stop loss uh, specific deduct deductible kicks in at 275,000. All right, how many did we have 
this, okay, so this outlines the large claims that we're responsible for. Does this outline the ones that we're not responsible for, Robert? Okay, so we only, if, if it's 275, so we had basically five claims that went over, that went over the stop loss during this year. How, how does that compare with previous years? Yeah. I don't have 2020. Okay, we have we don't have 2022 2020 information, but in 2021 you had five large claimants that went over the individual individual stop loss. Okay, so is that the report that we that we have here? Yes, you or, should have the 2021 information. Okay. In do we have do we have year to date? We have year to date zero. There is zero, but I think we have six that are at the 50 percent on um, place. USI, what we do is when a claimant hits a 50% of the expected stop loss, we start reporting that information to you all so that you know what to expect. Coming what, what about having, <clears throat> and I'm not saying this is what we ought, you know, what we should do, but it's, I think it's an important part of the conversation that our, that, that we haven't had as a board and, and uh, what about, okay, so if our, if, if it triggers at 275, do we have anything do we have like a, we don't have like a mini stop loss at 50 or 100 or 150. I mean, we're basically self-insured to that, to that number. That okay. is correct. All right. Is there an analysis that exists that would say, okay, and we're paying X dollars for a stop loss. Okay. Well, if we moved our stop loss figure down to 150, then it would have triggered an additional X amount of money from our stop loss carrier be paid and the premium, the additional, the, the delta on the premium would have been Y to try to figure out which one of those figures would be least. And, you know, I know one year might not be a, a good example, but if, you know, four or five years, we, we, have, we have four or five years worth of self-insured data now that exists somewhere. So have we run the analysis to see, I mean, and I, you know, again, I don't, I don't know y'all's business, but, <clears throat> Is it possible to have stop loss figures that kick in or stop loss coverage that kick in at a lower figure? Absolutely. I would assume there is a way to manage this like there are deductibles on anything on the other side of the, okay. So have we run the numbers to say, okay, if we had a stop loss at 100,000, <coughs> this would have been the premium, the additional premium we would have paid, which I'm sure would, would, have, would have been, you know, a number. and. But this is the cost avoidance that we, this is the claim cost avoidance that we would have experienced by having that lower stop loss deductible. Does, does that data exist somewhere? Yes, USI has a pro proprietary um, stop loss benchmarking tool that we use to set, to help our clients set the proper stop loss benchmarking. We do run that for you guys and we feel the 275 is the proper place. Um, because, of course, if you lower the, the individual stop loss, you're going to pay more in premium. I and, of course, you may not have as many claims hit that individual stop loss amount. So we do um, run an analysis to say if the risk outweighs the premium or which one is in the best place. And we will come to you and make a recommendation. If you're paying too much in stop loss premium and maybe you should up the ISL, we will let you know that. But if you're having too many hits and maybe you should lower the claim, we'll let you know that as well. So and we I, do run I, that analysis each year. Then I know everything, I mean, every, you know, the decisions that the board makes and the recommendations that y'all make are all forward looking, but we do, we do have enough historical data now Absolutely. to run from our, you know, our Jane and John Doe population of employees to see what those numbers would have been on a, you know, in just, if we could take a snapshot of the last five years and, you know, y'all have been our, our broker for that whole period of time, I believe, as well. So, yes. so that data, you know, you're saying it's a proprietary program, and but so that data is archived somewhere. Yes. I also assume that, you know, just if we go back five years, that goes back to, you know, 16 for data, I guess. So you would have the historical numbers for, well, in 16, um, you know, we had recommended, you know, has our stop loss been 275 the whole time? We need to check. I'll have to check okay. on that for you. Well, what, whatever it may have been at that time, it was some number. And this would have been, you know, this was the, this is what y'all paid for it for, you know, for 2016. If you had, these were the other quotes for other, for other stop loss mm -hmm. figures. If you had instituted a stop loss at 100 or at 150, 
this would have been the impact based on the real data that happened to your population. And that would be, that would be valuable to me because, Absolutely. you know, anecdotally, one of the things that we hear is that, you know, and it's doesn't, you know, it, it's what's said from the podium and, you know, maybe sometimes that's conversational and not necessarily always data driven, but um, that we've got, you know, just a handful of cases that run our numbers up. That's what we've historically been told. And I just want to try to see if that's, if that bears out in the data that has actually happened, not just the projections going forward. <clears throat> Absolutely. We can run that for you. Okay. We'll take a look at that. Yeah. So, so Stephen, on that, I mean, I think uh, USI came in in maybe 2018, so they weren't there from the, from the beginning. But I think there was some significant savings in the stop loss the first year they came in. Uh, I mean, it's similar. I, I know what you're saying. It's a similar thing that, mm -hmm. that we did when we were looking at the work comp and we bumped it from 25 to 100 and we saved 1.4 million or whatever, including the extra 75 that we were paying and, and you know, because we didn't have that many. I know in the last couple of years we have so, had, something we should have done years before. Yeah, clearly, clearly. Uh, but it was, uh, um, you know, I think we have had some. And I guess I, I want to make sure that we're not doing something that we'll look right. back on. And say, oh, we could have saved. And say, right. why, didn't, why didn't we do and that? I, th years I think that's, that's, that's a, a good, good point. Um, and I, but I think, again, our, our costs have been running high the last couple of years. We're having a, a good year right now. And, and uh, yeah. And um, well, we also have a lot fewer employees. So, you know, when we look at budgeted gross aggregate numbers versus experience numbers, you know, we, we've got a lot of vacancies that provide, that provide some, a cushion. Some flush. Yeah. yeah. But Absolutely. Uh, anyway, I, I think part of it is we're having a good year. So, uh, but yeah, hopefully we can get get him the information. We'll take a look at that for you all, and let I definitely Crystal share it with everybody. Point. Definitely. Thank you. We'll Appreciate the conversation, gentlemen. Um, but as to the item that we will be asked to approve, any I mean, so any, I any of I these think we're just discussing tonight. About, we're not approving it tonight. The dental stuff is a huge issue. I don't know when that conversation that's, is appropriate. Look, that's next. next? <laughs> but, but on the stop loss, they don't, they don't have a quote right now. And, and, okay. and so that's, uh, that would come later. But with some of the, th I, I would say the stop loss isn't going to impact enrollment. So that's, that's why it has a later time frame than, than this. Okay. But, so these uh, discussions are not going to impact our ability to vote so, this forward tonight? Uh, not specifically to stop loss, in, in my okay. opinion. But right. no, I mean, um, I'd, I'd like to see the data. But yeah. But yeah. That's, yeah. Um, uh, just, I'm going to jump ahead of you for the, sure. the dental, if, yeah. if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, I, I'd say that um, uh, the recommendation is, is for us to continue with Delta Dental and improve plan design or move dental um, because it says um, the provider network disruption based on, on the premier network may be significant. I would say that we are already having significant network disruption okay. with uh, with people getting dropped because Delta Dental apparently hasn't changed their rates in, in eight or nine years that they're that they're working with the um, with the uh, dentists with, with the dentist and and so um, I, I would say we're already to that point um, and I, I know it's it's something that, that you guys have been working on for for a while uh, I just he was here I told him he could go ahead and go but but the tax uh, appraisers office I mean property appraisers office was here they had eight individuals that are getting dropped because the provider is no longer accepting Delta. Um, and, and so. And some of these are large providers. Anecdotally, I've had a couple of conversations with other dentists that are also not accepting it that aren't on this list. And, you know, I do see the tailor that's referred to in here, but there, it's a real, it's a real problem. And I don't think that we have, um, you know, and I, and I, you know, and I, I don't know y'all's interactions with, you know, with, with staff and with, uh, constitutional folks, but, um, um, you know, generally speaking, I don't get a lot of complaints about benefit stuff. It's not something that I hear, or you know, at least in 10 years, it's not something I've heard regularly at all. The dental issue over the last 12 months, I have heard about from dozens of employees of ours, if you think aggregately between ours, tax collectors, and other constitutionals that are on our plan. It's a real, it, it's a real issue, and I, I can't see moving forward with, with dental, um, I mean with Delta on this. I don't know what, yeah, I think we need to take a hard look at some other, at some other options. Um, you know, whether I see Emeritus being listed as one, but I think this might be something that the board would be well served to, to give a little bit of thought to maybe even, you know, not just the Emeritus option, but maybe another 
maybe, maybe another one of the uh, uh, providers, just in respect to those people that we're making decisions that it affects them, mm -hmm. and it's a huge it's a huge problem. I mean, I, I don't know if you know y'all have if well I, even some of our senior staff has had even some of our senior staff that that share the dais with us frequently have had the same problems, but it's always prefaced by saying, well, you know, but I don't want to complain. Well, I mean, I, you know, I mean, if you don't if, if if I don't know, I don't know. I mean, my dentist is not taking is not is apparently is, is not, taking not taking it either, but she's still been she's still been processing my stuff but she's not you know taking it going forward in the future and not accepting new patients that haven't I mean she's not on here and you know it's it's a real issue and I don't know exactly I'm not presenting that I've got the answer I don't know what it is but I don't think it's continuing with Delta in my opinion well, well okay well let's talk let's talk about that for a minute um, because on the flip side of that you know Delta if everything's working properly, and I, I wasn't aware of what Robert and what y'all just said about them not raising their, their rates, and they're they're going to have to. I mean, everything's going up as we've seen in all these change orders. That's number one. So I would I mean, assume it's it's almost ten years of not raising the reimbursements for their for their for their practice, providers, right? yeah. which is hard to believe. It is hard to believe. It's been regurgitated many times from, you know, and then these are, you know, all professional people. I mean, it, it, I, I don't believe there's any chance that's not true. Which no, is, no, it's, it's no. hard to believe though. It is hard to believe, but but I guess I would say, um, you know, it, it would be sure would be nice if we could add that as part of a choice, because um, there are some folks I'm sure that, like myself, I've I've had the same dentist and I've had Delta since I've been here with the board, and uh, really really appreciate it. Prior to that, you know, I was on <laughs> I was on the school board dental insurance, which was horrific. I'll just say that everything was you pay up front and you wait. You have to file a claim and you wait for a reimbursement check of a portion of the. It was just terrible. At least with Delta, you pay 20 bucks. And then they cover the the rest of it, you know. The, uh, the, so maybe you just don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Maybe you keep Delta, and then if someone else wants to go get United Concordia, uh, you know, I've had them before too. And believe me, when you have Delta, and then you have United Concord Concordia or U, UHC or some of these others, you you go back to Delta. So would it be possible to have multiple choices, a cafeteria, for lack of a better word, so that if I'm happy with Delta but Steve isn't, or Steve's happy with Delta or I'm not, that we could choose United Concordia or some other provider, and then that way everyone's happy? Is that well, something that could be done? Let me take a look at that. Literally, for most times for groups this size, um, they, they, the carrier wants to be a total replacement. And well, they, so, maybe they don't get that choice because it's yeah. really it's really affordable too. I mean, what is our what is our dental plan like? Twenty bucks a month or twenty one? I mean, it's very reasonable. I think what I'm hearing on the dais, just on the dais, I think folks might be willing to pay an extra 10 bucks, you know, uh, to pick a different plan. So I think that's, I'm hearing what my counterparts are saying, mm -hmm. and I'm hearing uh, apparently this is a big problem, so we need to find a way to address it. I, I don't think we give a, Stephen, I'll agree with you, I don't think we give them a, um, a, you know, an exclusive, let's put it that way for lack of a better word. And Jeff, if the, Jeff, I know they're working on options. I don't know if, if we have them all today, but uh, I think this might be something that we have, we'd have to. Okay. Well, is this one of the ones that we're being asked to vote on tonight, though? Let's see. We are Determine. not. We're going to have an update for you guys at the August 18th meeting, but we are working diligently. We understand the uh, concerns. We're running you guys out of time. Then. When is Delta uh, Delta. open enrollment comes October? Mm -hmm. It's going to start in October, and we are tight on time, but we will have other information for you guys to make a decision by the next meeting. For so sure. for tonight, it says part of what we're going to be voting on is, A, determine the medical and dental insurance plan structure premiums to offer the county employees. So we're, okay, so how can we do that if we don't know who we're going to have? I don't see how we vote on this tonight. And in fact, Crystal, it seems to me like there's some unanswered questions. If we drop this until the next meeting, would you be able to come back with some more definitive answers? Absolutely, yeah. Guys, August I think we need to drop this fine. tonight. Yeah, but I, I think if if maybe we can just get through some of this to, to give some direction, that way we we can have the uh, the final vote, and and they have you know again like this, the, mm -hmm. uh, I know they were already aware of our concerns, but um, maybe not the, to the extent that you know I, I didn't know until this morning the property appraiser had eight people that were yeah again, and there are other people that are er, every time it gets mentioned, oh, you know you, another hand goes up, so um, Jeff if, if Maybe we don't we don't vote on it. Maybe we could just have it as a as a Discussion. quick presentation okay. right now. Yeah, yeah. And that's then fine. Uh, we can give some direction and then vote on it in two weeks. Sure, Allison, that's fine to do that. Do it that way. Leave it on the agenda. Discuss it and then not make a vote. Absolutely. Just affirmatively make. Okay, that's what we'll do then. And I guess my thing is we can just have the discussion this morning. If yeah. if you guys are good with that, 
they don't have to come back today. And Steve, you all right with that? Yeah, I don't. And just for, you know, while, while we're chatting about it, I don't have an issue with the rest of the stuff. It was really those two things I wanted to try to address, making sure we're being as as fiscally sound as possible with the decisions we're making on the on the stop loss on the huge. Uh, catastrophic claims and addressing the dental those are really the only that's so, really the only two issues uh, I have. all right so we might fast forward a little bit i think there were maybe two other things um one uh, jeff almost like what you're talking about i think we were offering too many options um for the for, long-term disability for for some disability we want to consolidate some of those providers do you no just problem. want to talk about that real quick absolutely mm -hmm. i just wanted to mention one thing is on the dental we are looking at metlife and emeritus and we're looking at full insured versus self-funded and we are taking into consideration the network and how many providers will still be in both the networks because we do have a list of the top 100 dental providers that you, your employees actually used and so when we're doing a comparison with other vendors we're making sure that those doctors are in both are in the new vendors network if you guys were to make that choice fantastic so we'll have that information for you guys as well that's that's it our crystal maybe if we could even see that just to see how what the disruption would look like but again, it seems like it's occurring. And I assume dropped. when you pull our population, you're pulling our constitutional participants as well. If anyone using the dental plan in right. the prior 12 months. And so for the life and disability, um, one of the options is they wanted to bring in a voluntary short-term disability and then one that dovetail into a long, voluntary long-term disability. So the reason this would be a good idea is because it would ease administration, of course, for the HR team, but it also would make the experience a lot better for employees because it would be integrated. So if someone were to go out on a short-term disability claim that then extended into a long-term disability claim, the process would be seamless for them. So we have two options for voluntary short-term disability that dovetail into similar options for voluntary long-term disability that we wanted you guys to consider. Any questions on that? No, ma'am. Robert? Yeah, sorry. Uh, so two quick, th oh, I want to point out one thing. The uh, population health management, so this is something that we've been slowly working towards the last couple of years. Um, so this is really for the em employees out there. Uh, I think we got an email earlier this week, so thank you, Crystal. Um, but you know, last year we started the biometrics. Um, this year, uh, and you get a discount if you do that for twenty-five dollars, and then uh, and that is um, per uh, pay period that it comes out. Um, or for the if you do the annual physical, which has to be done by October first, right? So you have to have, have the physical done by October 1st of this year, going back to October 1st of last year. If you've had a physical, you can get up to $50 uh, uh, discount on the, on the, uh, on the rate. Um, so again, it's something a little bit different that we're, that we're doing, but if, if you do the biometrics or the uh, annual physical, you can get that, that discount on, on your premium. Um, and then, uh, one other thing, I don't know if, if we're going to hit it, but um, we had at least talked with Crystal about maybe moving to a utilization on the on the mental health side. Um, what's what is that? We uh, are are looking at some additional uh, mental health providers, and we'll have more information for you in an update at the August 18th okay. meeting. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? I think that's uh, that's all I had. All right. so. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Look forward to the continued discussions. All right. Number two. We're talking about uh, recommendation authorization for the acquisition of real property located on Guidey Lane um, for, a, I guess it's for a drainage uh, facility. Stephen, you want to? Yeah, thank you. Um, it's, it's, adjacent to, uh, it's adjacent to a county drainage pond on Guidey, mm -hmm. which leads into, uh, leads into an area called, uh, or a little creek called Sugar Creek, which runs further east of uh, Guidey and where the bridge is, runs further east into Fox Run and Scenic Hills. So it's been, uh, it's been or uh, sorry, runs further east into Woodlands, Fox Run, and Scenic Hills. Yeah, and, and uh, obviously I'm going to be supportive of it. Uh, I, anything we could do for drainage anywhere in this county, I'm going to be supportive of it. Um, and I know that we need a, seat, a super majority, so do we anticipate uh, everyone being here tonight? Allison, is anyone? Okay, because we got to have, if only four of us are here, do we still need all four? Yes, you okay. do. The ordinance is specific that it needs four. All right, well, it's, it's a reasonable, I mean, it's a very small dollar amount in the scheme of things. So yeah, no, no issues. All right. Uh, number three, Debbie, I'm going to recognize you. OLF eight, obviously we've talked about it. We've hashed it around. Um, meanwhile, interest rates keep going up. 
money supply is going to start tighten. Uh, and, you know, we had a, um, let's just say, a less than a stellar first meeting of folks who were interested with a um, small number. Yeah, yeah Steve. One second, and I'm not going to bring this up tonight, but since so we're, you know, going to be out of here pretty early this morning. Yes, we um, are. That Guiding Lane property, it is above our appraisal, but it matches the appraisal, uh, the appraisal by Chris Jones' office. Oh, it does. So just for, the, just for the record, yeah. So why does that trigger? Because of our appraisal? Yep. Because of our appraisal, that's why that's, that's really weird. Because typically the property appraiser's office are like low ball, low. Mm -hmm. What the heck is up with that? Who was our appraiser? That's a public record, right? Yeah, I think I, yeah, I don't. You I please, don't. I want to know because how does that happen? I that, does, that doesn't make sense to me. Is there some gold in there we don't know about? Mm -hmm. uh, Charlie Cheryl was our appraiser. Uh, there is a easement that runs through it, so there's a little deduction for that. Okay. All right. I appreciate that. Thank you. Sorry to, sorry to pull you up just for that small answer. All right. What, anything else on that, Stephen? I do have some comments about OLF when you get done. Yep, absolutely. Well, I'm going to hear it from Debbie, and I'm going to have some comments too. Debbie, you want to give us an update? Okay. So I want to just give you the stats of where we are right now. We sent the RFQ to 197 firms, and then what Jeff did is he pushed it out to all of the uh, states that have vendor registry to 5,208 firms. Uh, so far, we've had 60 different firms view it. We've had 37 downloads. Um, we also did a mailer to some of the major funds, uh, like Blackstone, Capstone, those kind. A uh, hundred of those went out. We have had about um, 15 to 20 returned. So we don't know actually you know, who looked at them, but we did mail a nice uh, uh, postcard. It's due August 9th. Um, then, of course, then we'll know the quality of the people who are going to respond to it. Okay, that's the Mr. latest. Mr. Chairman. Yes, so, Stephen. All right. And, you know, I don't, I mean, I have serious issues with vendor registry. It's been, uh, it's, to me, it's a, it's been a failure for a number of years. And I, I, just, I don't like the way the process is. I mean, I, this, you know, this goes back a few years, you know, Jeff and Robert, but, I mean, I, we had something where it said it went to 100 firms and, you know, I, and the backup detailed these email addresses. And just anecdotally, I can tell you, I get 50 of them weren't any good. The mm -hmm. firms weren't active anymore. The, I mean, the, the two or three of the people that they were sent to were deceased at the time. <laughs> I mean, this has been some number of years, and it's not, uh, not any, I'm not passing, saying anything about Jeff. Jeff has sure. inherited the system that's in place, but I just, I, I don't like that. Um, anecdotally, I have talked to, you know, a couple of developers and have mentioned they weren't aware that it was on the street. So, are, did we... I mean, NAOP is, NAOP is, uh, you know, is, is here in town. Do we, did somebody distribute it through the NAOP leadership to their members or through the Pensacola Association of Realtors through their members or even through the, you know, even through the HBA? I mean, that's, you know, HBA is really builders, not developers, but still, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we do have some bodies here locally that are involved in development and um, out of the, you know, two developers told me that they weren't aware that it was on the street. That's out of two that I asked. Okay. So two for two. Yeah. So I mean, that's uh, so, you know, we can do these things that are computer and internet driven that make numbers look good, but to have the to to get the penetration into, you know, some some of our local folks, there's a there's a way to you know through those relationships to get the word out you know greater locally. Um, I just, you know, I mean, it would seem very reasonable that NAOP, PARS, and the HBA would be three that, you know, and all you do is communicate with their leadership and say, hey, you shoot this out to your members. Yeah. There you go. I mean, we've got, you know, that's, that's a reach of, I don't know how many people are in the Association of Realtors. I would assume it's very, very large. But, but you know, NAOP has, you know, several and HBA has several. But. No, I, I agree with you. Um, Robert? Yeah, so uh, I guess I was more looking for uh, the agenda item just says discussion. Yeah. Um, didn't have any backup, so I, no. I didn't know what what your uh, was it just for the discussion we just had? Yeah. Uh, or was there was there more? That's all. Well, I, that's I, all I'm asking. I, I, here, here's my thing. It's it's frustrating because we work very very hard to do a lot of things. We got a we've got a master plan that even though the the making of the sausage was ugly as it always is, the finished product is very good. But anecdotally, I'm hearing that because it's such a um, 
detailed master plan that it's it's actually an impediment to some who would who would want to make an offer. That that worries me. Um, so we have to we have to decide. I mean, I'm you know again, I never wanted any of that. I think everyone on this dais knows that. Everyone in town, the News Journal and WEAR, I wanted to have jobs on that field. It was a big, 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 big compromise. With that said, though, um, you know I think it's important that we honor our word and honor what we did. But if it's going to get in the way of a sale, um, you know we're, we're still 14 and a half million into that, Steve. So I want that money back. I want that yeah. money back and lost, so we can go put it to work for the citizens. Oh yeah, I've got, I've got, I've got it earmarked. Um, yeah, me too. But <laughs> um, just anecdotal, is there a sign on the property? That's kind of what I'm saying at this point. I mean, that's you, a silly question, but it, do we at least have a sign no, out there that says? Well, we have a sign that says this is county property, no, no trespassing. Do we have something saying it's for sale? Uh, no, we don't. We don't have that. I mean, that's a simple. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, at least I can't would, do much. I could, I could put a sign up, though. I can I put mean, a sign up too. I can put a lot of them up. <laughs> yeah, uh, Debbie, what, what is the, what is the rationale? The rationale is that all we're doing right now is qualifying at least four firms uh, mm -hmm. or less, and then we were going to come back to the board after we talked to those four firms to determine how you wanted to uh, proceed, mm -hmm. whether it's sell all of it, sell some of it. Uh, lease some, you know, so I didn't want to presume to put a sign out there until sure. we had talked well, to think, all the end. And I think the board has, has said, I, I mean, I've heard on this dais, you know, that frontage area along Nine Mile Road is extremely valuable, but as this economy changes, as the interest rates go up and the money supply tightens, you know, it, it's losing value every day. So I would be, I would be really uh, kind of in agreement with Stephen that at a minimum we should have a sign there with a phone number. It at a, least gets some interest. Yeah, it gets I mean, interest. gets people talking yeah. maybe yeah. and... I, you know, I, I, there's nothing wrong with that. I think no. it's a good idea. And then you never know who's going to come out of the woodwork and write a big check and say, I'll take the whole thing. And boy, wouldn't that be amazing. Wouldn't that be incredible. But um, meanwhile, Chips, can you come to the, to the front? Because I want to talk about the back area. I mean, I'm, when we're talking about selling stuff, I'm, I'm talking about the, the pretty pictures and the, and the, and the master plan. But I'm, I'm never going to give up on the jobs. That was a big compromise. So I want to know, last meeting we talked about an OLF or a Triumph grant for at least the infrastructure. We've got a lot of skin in the game, millions of dollars invested. Where are we at on doing a, a Triumph grant for infrastructure, for stormwater, potentially roads, uh, for at least the northern half where we're going to create jobs? Where are we at on that? We, we certainly have had those meetings and those conversations with Scott Luth and, and uh, his group. Um, we met with Debbie and talked about that. Um, our, our thoughts right now are to wait until this uh, solicitation closes uh, to see if somebody does write a check and purchase the whole thing well, uh, but, before we go forward with that. But the problem with that is, Chips, you know, that may not happen. So why can't we work on two separate tracks at the same time? Again, I, I don't know how much staff time it takes to rework the, uh, the initial proposal that we had um, and rework that with a, with a diminished number of acres. Um, I'd hate to wait because we might be waiting a long time. And meanwhile, there are Panama City's getting grants. Other counties to our east are getting grants from Triumph. We got a big grant for the airport. That was a big, big thing. But I want more. That's that's. I mean, we got to get our share and we got to fight for it. And we have, you know, a friendly board. Let's. We may not even have to fight. We just got to ask. We just got to ask. Yeah. I mean, I mean we may not even have to. Fight we got to ask. So, uh, you know, do, do you guys agree? I mean, should we be moving so, forward? I mean, whether we have whether we have piecemeal acquisition, which I. I I don't think any of the elected board on the dais has mentioned leasing the property. So whether we have piecemeal acquisition or, you know, wholesale acquisition, it's, again, as a layperson, it seems like it's clear where stormwater stuff is going to have to go. Sure. So why don't we move forward with a Triumph grant for that part? I mean, that, you know, what I, you know, I, I clear, I, I agree. What I don't want to do is and I think, no, no, I'm not saying anybody in the board does, but go and put a bunch of infrastructure in, piecemealing these lots out. You know, I've got, a, I've got a, another issue over there that mm -hmm. I think the fact that we've predestined this layout has greatly hampered our marketability. But I don't, sure. think, doing, I don't think doing stormwater improvements in an area that's clearly going to be dedicated for that, no matter what the use of the property is or who's doing it, I don't think that's going to hamper any marketability. Absolutely. I think that's going to increase marketability because yep. that's an expense that they don't have to take on, and potentially it's an expense our taxpayers don't have to take on. We can get, 
you know, some money out of our out of our board, out of the triumph for it. Yeah. Well, I, okay. So I, look, I'm with you. Let's. I mean, we all know it's going to be the southwest corner. That's the wettest part of the property. So perhaps we need to, to move forward with that. I'd like to also at least how how are how are you going to get to any part of that road from Nine Mile Road? I mean, we got to talk about a road. Some at least a road going in. I mean, I think that you talk about adding marketability. You put I mean, a road. I, I think the maybe the discussion of saying that we'll do some of that, you know, that that will be done. As part of the sales? As, yeah, that we'll do it, but I, I don't, you know, I don't, again, I, I think it would, if, if we clearly dedicate, if we clearly delineated where we wanted, where this road was going to go, mm -hmm. then it might hamper the marketability based on, you know, somebody that instead of, you know, that would limit them to, you know, 400 front feet when they need, you know, they need 2,500 front feet. Sure. To, they, they don't need a road going through their facility. Just again hypothetically i want to get this divested <laughs> right that is that is my intent i'm and i think that's been made clear by this board on multiple oh, occasions sure. that's our intent i'm not seeing that kind of work its way through the system right. our system for whatever reason well so stephen the one thing that and i'm and i'm tracking with you i want to go get a triumph grant but we can't get a triumph grant for something if we're going to sell it and turn it over to the private sector, it wouldn't qualify. We, it has right. to be something. So I'm, I'm sticking with the, the master plan, at least in that, that northern part, is for jobs. I mean, that, that was my one win. That was the one win for, frankly, the rest of the county that's looking for us to make jobs out of this field, not a, a soccer complex and hotels and housing and all these I mean, other unless there's wonderful offer, things. Unless we get an offer on the whole thing for jobs, then we... Well, I would love it. I, then, I mean, that would be a great thing. I think thing. our board takes, a, takes that discussion up. Yeah. But my, my fear is yeah. where, where people want to buy, they want to turn it into subdivisions and apartments and condominiums because that's where they turn a quick buck. That's where they do it. They want it. Even these mixed unit developments, what goes in first? The housing. Maybe the retail comes in. I mean, I see it in, in, in my district right now in Beulah. There were supposed to be some, some uh, out parcels out front with restaurants and all these great. No, they built the apartment complex and the other part sits there vacant. That's what happens because that's how they're making money. So we have to be very careful. I don't want to sell it to a developer who's going to make residential there, and I, I will vote against that. I just want to make that perfectly clear I will, because that was never the intent. What we've got there right now on paper is a compromise. But, I mean, Stephen, we could sell it tomorrow if, we, if this board says let's just make it all residential. But I don't want to do that because that, that would, to me, that would be violating the entire reason why we spent decades getting that property in the first place. Yeah, and I don't think, I don't, I don't think that has... I don't, I don't think that has any amount of broad support on the board. Okay. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't perceive that, but, you know, I, yeah, you, you just, you need to get moving, I guess. Yeah, amen. It's, 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 I mean, and time, so, is, time is, you know, I think it's clear that we have peaked. Now, you know, I'm not saying that we're going to fall off a cliff or anything. I'm not, you know, I mean, we, I hope so. I mean, I hope we don't. Yeah, I mean, you know, hey, you, to get up and go every day, you got to be optimistic. So, uh, you know, I'm optimistic that doesn't happen. I think there are a lot of reasons why. I think there are a lot of reasons why, uh, you know, things that happened 12 or 13 years ago don't happen today. I think there's a lot less, uh, a lot less subprime uh, paper, you know, on the books. I think there, you know, there's a lot less, uh, a lot less arms in place as well. I mean, I think you have a lot of, I think you have a lot of reasons to not feel like it's going to be like it was, you know, 12 or 13 years ago. However. There's also no inclination by the Fed or by the federal government, by, by policymakers, that there's going to be any, you know, certainly any pullback in interest rates. And, you know, it, it's to a person, the intent of every Federal Reserve member that has been interviewed is continued rate hikes throughout this calendar year into next year. Yep. And, you know, mortgage, it doesn't, you know, it's not, you know, it's not basis point for basis point move with mortgage rates, but it certainly has an effect. Sure and it's does. had an effect and it will continue to. And, you know, if we're, you know, primarily looking at commercial, you know, commercial development on, you know, or especially in this first phase, commercial uh, retail type, type development, you know, whatever we might see for mortgage rates, you know, on the top line of top line of news or whatever, I mean, you can add, you know, 150, 200 basis points to that for commercial. For commercial, absolutely. So, so now you're talking about, you know, people, uh, you know, getting on the hook for seven and a half, eight percent money, you start, you, you know, and if, especially if that were to tick up some more, you, I mean, you, you start to hit a, you start to hit a threshold that things, you know, that, that things become, you know, people's interest wanes, you know. Well, along that, that line, Stephen, um, I'm with you. I think we need to put a sign up there on the front 
because that's, that's going to be some sort of retail, it's going to be some sort of mixed use according to the master plan, according to its location geographically. The question I have for the lawyer is, um, do, we have to, do we have to do some sort of a, do, do we have a real estate uh, company on the hook on a continuing contract with the county or would we have to go out and waste time and do a, a whole solicitation or can we name select a realtor? To we can put Debbie's cell phone number on the side. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, right. No, that's just, but that's a serious question because there we go. There could be another 60-day wait for a solicitation for a realtor. And yeah, so you can certainly go out there and put signage and circle them back to, for example, our purchasing department, uh, or circle them back to other county, whoever you think is the appropriate mm -hmm. person that can then steer them to our uh, procurement, which is, uh, you know, what what was already advertised. Um, but if they, but you can cert you don't have to have a realtor. Yeah, to, well, no, we don't have one that's currently. We okay. used to. We don't currently. Gentlemen, I, I just think that might not be a bad idea, if not just for this property, for all the property that we own. We have a ton of property. Um, I will just say from experience on the school board, we had we would put out an open uh, solicitation and we would get a commercial real estate brokerage and they would actively go out and we, we sold a lot of property. We sold a lot of property. And it was good, but there was an incentive. Obviously, there's an incentive, and it was worked into the contract, and so that realtor made money. Just putting a sign out there, and you know, I don't know that you'd have the same level of uh, motivation, right? So, would the I mean, would the board be interested in putting out a contract for a realtor to represent us in this and other uh, property transactions? That way, we got them, and we could tap their shoulder the minute we want to sell. So, them. we, as Allison mentioned, we have, we have done that before, and and it may have been before you were on the board, but we had somebody on contract within at least within the ten years that Lumen and I have been on the board. What happened and, to that? Um, we just allowed it to expire. There was no, there were no issues. I mean, we didn't ever have an issue with the, with the, uh, you know, with the vendor, um, but we just allowed it to expire and, and didn't move forward with it again. Um, long term, I'm I'm fine with that, but I. I even if the impact is not as great as it would be if it's a branded sign, you know, from so-and-so developer, mm -hmm. that's, you know, that's got the, we've, we've got to put something out there that says the property's for sale. I, I mean, agree. That, that's, it seems elementary. By, you know, we, we've got owner. to do that. Yeah, yeah, for sale by owner. Yeah. And yeah. have yeah. Wes designate some staff member to, you know, to, to receive emails or, or phone calls or whatever. We got to, we have to okay. get the word out okay. there. I mean, no, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm tracking with you guys. Yeah. So but based long term, on. long term. I'm okay with that. That's, uh, you know, uh, I think we all have relationships and, you know, I think all of us, you know, have relationships. We've all had, you know, experiences, uh, you know, experiences with folks around here. I, I don't think that that would be an issue for our board to do that. So, um, a big uh, sign with it, with the logo, Escambia County yeah, yeah. property for sale, yeah. um, opportunity. And then who's Debbie, your phone number on there. Right. <laughs> Maybe I mean, let, I, well, just we'll let Wes pick. I mean, I, whatever he wants to do is fine with me. You guys want to do it. Cause I think, I mean, I, I agree. Robert, do you, what do you think of that? I think we should have done it a while ago. I thought we did. I, you know, I mean, I, I think I, dri I drive by it every day. And it, I'm like, it's it's not like we haven't gotten any unsolicited offers. You, you know, I mean, we have. Yeah. You know, but you know, as with the contract, it's coming in front of us anyway. You know, we would it would be up to us to negotiate everything, and um, you know, so I would say that uh, you know, the price is right. Anything's for sale. So, okay, so you'd be for a sign, a sign. If it's just a sign, I mean, it's with anything. I mean, it's uh, just because the sign's up doesn't mean that it's, again, if the price is right, and that's what I think we've said the whole time, price is right, it could it could move. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, yeah, I mean, a sign's a, a sign. It, it's, I guess the question I'm asking, we, obviously we're not taking votes as a workshop, but we can get, certainly give direction. Stephen and I think there should be a sign yeah, there yesterday. I'm, I'm saying there's, there's no issue with having a, a, okay. a sign. I mean, it's it, it, sign. There's three of us. All right. It, it, it doesn't doesn't change anything. It might really. change other, things. other than 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 marketing that it's yeah. that if we're trying to move it, but right. It might change things yeah. for the better, right? It might change the status quo. Okay, so we'll come back to the we'll come back to the triumph thing because if we built the triumph stormwater, we'd turn around and sell it to Scooby Doo Developing. We'd have they'd claw that money back because we don't own it anymore, sure. right? So we got to be careful on that. Yeah, there is gray in there. They, you know, I believe wholeheartedly they intend to have this money get into the community. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, if we, if, you know, if, 
I mean, we've we've got a lot of money on the property already. We have yes, our we, we have we have our match. Yes, we, we have do. the match that's required yes. already on the ground. So, you know, if if through that partner, if through that you know partnering with Triumph, we start putting, you know, we 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 sell to you know, ABC company that's going to put 300 jobs on you know part of the north part. We're even if we divest that dirt. I'm not sure that it's absolutely black and white that just because we divested 100 acres here to create 300 jobs on it, that that's going to trigger a clawback from Trump. They don't want the money back. Right. Now, they want it to be spent in a way that produces jobs. Correct. Yeah. But they don't want the money back. They want it in our, you know, in the community. And again, and, they, and especially they want it in our community. Right. They want it here. So I, I don't think that we're going to trigger, that we're going to definitively trigger a clawback by you know, by selling portions of it. Now, if we, you know, if we took the grant and 90 days later sold the entire footprint to somebody, maybe that, yeah. you know, may, maybe that is more of a black and white issue where we maintain no interest in the entire parcel. And, and maybe, okay. maybe through the sales contract of such a hypothetical yeah. situation, you work that in. And if there's a clawback, I mean, that, that could all be worked into yeah, the sales price. Right. So, all right. Um, so for, in, uh, by way of guidance, yep. a sign on the property, and then Robert, what do you got? No, I was just going to, as, we, as we're talking about work getting done, I wanted to recognize Navy Federal who started their right. their project on their 100 acres that, that we sold them a couple years ago. Um, and uh, I know the community is excited to see that started, as is Navy Federal. So I'm very uh, excited. As, as we're talking about that, I just wanted to throw it out there that, that I guess it was uh, last week. So that's that's great to see. It is. It's fantastic. And that stormwater pond, they've, their digging got full pretty quick. Um, so, Debbie, you, your takeaway from this is a sign, yeah. a big sign, nice one with the logo and everything. And, reach out. and your cell phone number on it? Yeah. And reach out to other, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Anything else on that, gentlemen? All right. We're going to move forward now. Uh, this next one is, well, I asked Wes to put this on there. For, for about three months, I've been trying to work through the staff to get a, a meeting scheduled, joint meeting. Um, to talk about the homeless issue. Obviously, the bridge got cleared out. Those people got pushed out. And now there's a number of them out in the county. And I get, I don't know about you guys, but we can never talk about this, but I get constant complaints about panhandlers, about people in the roads, about people camping in the woods, starting fires in the woods. We had a very bad fire uh, off of Highway 98 that almost took out a subdivision. And it was a homeless camp. We all feel sorry for them, for the ones who are truly down on their luck, but it's a complex problem. And um, anyhow, uh, I, so I, it's not happening for a lot of reasons. I talked to Grover. Wes told me he, he couldn't get a, an answer from the city. Um, I talked to Grover. Grover said, oh, we're not sure. We don't know. Um, I talked to Connie Bookman, called me and asked, hey, you know, when are we going to start talking about things? I said, look, I've been trying for months to get a, a meeting scheduled, a joint meeting, a workshop, not anything to make firm decisions, but a workshop to kind of see where everyone's at, because I know everyone has different philosophies about how money should be spent, about, but we've, Meanwhile, we're sitting on about four million bucks earmarked for this issue. So I want, I would like to schedule a meeting, but if I, I want to know number one, if there's an appetite for it, number two, if so, when would you like to do it? I mean, I, you know, I am getting complaints from constituents. Um, I get them all the time about panhandlers and I've explained to him, in fact, they want us to do an ordinance. I have a guy that's all over me wanting us to do, to, to do an ordinance. And I've explained to him that it's, a, it's a first amendment right for a guy to hold a sign. And Allison, that's what you've told and us. Even if we disagree with that, there's there's substantial case law apparently, mm -hmm. you know, 18 months ago or two years ago, Allison, mm -hmm. something like that, that the Supreme Court of Florida that just basically rendered anything we do, yeah, any moot. literally anything we do, moot. Exactly. And, 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 but anyway, people don't understand that. No matter how many times you tell them. So um, I know that there's an appetite on the city's part. As chairman, I'm trying to facilitate a workshop. That's all. Um, you know, people can't get their calendars right, so I couldn't, you know, Wes said he wasn't hearing back from the city. The city sends this email string back, and it says, well, here's a bunch of dates. Um, so I, I, you know, I don't know who's telling, yeah, I, I don't know where the pinch point is. Let's, let's just be very diplomatic about it. So Do Jeff, we want to have a meeting? If so, let's schedule it. If not? I'd, I'd say I think, I think we can figure out what we want to do with our money. Um, and I, and I, I mean, I know that the... Okay, so I, I know, a meeting, I know. but not with the city. Well, I'm not saying we, we can't. I mean, I, I think we need to decide as a board the direction we want to go in before we meet with the city and 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 have all them 
come tell us how we need to spend our money. Well, it's a workshop, Robert. So I, I, I think I understand it's a workshop. We would hear the, ideas from them. Right, but I, I mean, I, I think I mean, I think we know what the ideas are. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we need to 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 have some direction as a, as a board. I mean, as it is. You know, I, I don't know how much money they have left. I think they they spend it all on on hotel rooms and and things right. like that. Right. And 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 I, and we had a pretty good discussion earlier this year where we said that's not what we want to do. Right. right. I mean, this is one time money that that we want to put towards a meaningful project that can have an impact that maybe gets somebody off the ground that gets an organization organization started that that they can run with it after that because these aren't recurring funds. It's it's okay. so. Um, you know, I, I think we need to decide as a board um, what direction we want to he head in and, and, and what we think is the, the best solution. And then I think we can meet with the city and see how we're going to partner with them. So prior to that, a workshop on the topic? I think so. What do you think, Steve? Okay. So, Debbie, next week's Committee of the Whole, I want to add on for discussion of homeless issues. Because apparently we don't want to go talk to the city until we get it together, and that's fine. I'm fine with it. I just I don't want to I don't want to blame the wrong person for holding us up on a meeting if if that's not really the case, right? So the string I saw it looks like it was on our our part, not the city's part. That's why we're having this. We're as Bill O'Reilly would say, we're going to do it live. We're going to have the meeting live. So we're not going to have a meeting with the city because people want to talk about it first. So we'll talk about it first next week. It's on the agenda. Anything else, Steve? Anything from you? All right. So we won't even discuss this stuff tonight, right? Because we got it solved, unless y'all want to. Um, County Attorney's report, anything for us today? I'm just sharing two pieces of good news with you. If you remember the Spirit software, that was the correction software that never worked as requested. Mm -hmm. And um, they entered into a settle agreement with us for $85,000 that they had to pay us. That, but they had to stretch it out in monthly payments. They have now paid us back everything that they owed us. And so we've closed out that case. So eventually awesome. we got there. <laughs> yep. And the other one, I want to give some kudos to Will Nelson in my office for putting sufficient pressures forward on a pending case that um, had them dismiss the case against us. So the Stallworth case is now closed as well. So two pieces of good news for you. That's fantastic. That's great stuff. All right. Uh, any final comments before we end our workshop today? Um, anything from you, Debbie? Anything from anyone else? Am I forgetting anything? All right. We'll see you guys at 4.30. Adjourned.